meeting for order. And first up for general information, Mr. Dwyer. Is Mr. Durzo. Hi. Hi. Can you hear me? You can hear me better? Yes. Yes. Okay, good. Um, so my name is Greg Durza. I own um, Barn Out Back in Hadley, Massachusetts, located at 30 Lawrence Plain Road in Hadley. And um, it's a barn shop that holds um, vintage and gifts, um, as well as packaged, um, my package Greg's goodies items. Um, I'm only open on the weekend, but we have plans to do a, um, we're calling it a barn fest on October 2nd. From, it's a Sunday from uh, 10 to 5. And I'm just starting very small this year. I'm inviting um, 10 local vendors spanning into Connecticut. Um, they're people that I know, and basically what I'm doing, I sent this over, but basically this is the map of the event. This is currently, let me see if I can get this. Okay, so this is my house right here, and um, this is the side field that normally I don't do really anything with, but the vendors will be on the side field. Sign is up in the front. And um, some parking will be here. The barn is here. And um, wait, pointing wrong, sorry. It's hard to do it backwards. Oh, barn is here and um, some handicap parking here, as well as overflow parking back in the back um, field that we do own as well. Um, I don't, being that it's a first year thing, I'm not expecting it to be like really, really busy, but because there's gonna be 10 different vendors, um, we'll be using social media for, um, information to the public. Um, so that will be multiplied by 10 from what I normally do. Um, I will have some signage by the road. It'll be temporary signage, um, probably just a, a lawn sign. And um, I'll be handing out flyers um, up until that, that event as well. Um, as far as parking, I, um, one of my good friends, Dana Levine, she's um, a um, retired state trooper. She'll be handling the parking situation. Um, and she is the one that came up with the design for the parking um, for me. So, um, there won't be any food except for my prepackaged Greg's goodies items. Um, there will not be any entertainment um, this year. And I'm hoping it to be, if it, it's passed, I would love to do it yearly, um, if that's possible. Okay, question. You, on your, your drawing there, you've got a red line and out back. The parking is going to be out back. Yes, um, so normally parking is right here already. Yep. So that would be flanking where the vendors are. And um, we're doing overflow to the back field, which we do own as well. About how, how far back, about how far back from the road is that back field? Um, oh gosh, you had to ask me. <laughs> Um, it's behind the barn. So like, if you know where the barn is, it's I know like, where the barn is. Yeah. Yeah. So it's to the, it's behind my sister's house, which my dad owns that field. So that's, yeah. So it would be, and that field goes back considerably. So there's plenty of room for parking. Okay. Um, I don't foresee us using more than just the front of that. Okay. And, um, I did 
put in the plans to do a handicapped um, porta potty behind the barn, okay. so that it's not you know. So the the parking to the left where the where the vendors go are, are this. You said your dad owns this. Is this two properties or one property? It's one property. Originally, it was. It, so my sister, it's one property, but his his land goes this side of the house and then the back field behind okay. my sister's house, which is here. Let me just bring that up on the screen. Okay. It's actually a fairly large uh, parcel there. 7.2. Right. Oh, okay, so I, I see how it's divided. Okay, because you know, that was confusing when you said behind your sister's house. So I, yeah. I, I got it now. Okay. What's the depth of the uh, business zone, Jim? 300 feet. That's what I was going to get to next. Okay. I knew, right. you, I knew you were working in that direction. Okay. Um, just to inform you, Mr. Durza, we'll probably be okay with it this year okay but if you try to do it multiple years your business zone only goes back 300 feet from the road which means you can only use the first 300 feet for business and that includes parking if you try to make this a yearly event we probably will not give you permit permission to do this over and over again because you're not back to the parking in the back would no, will not be in the business zone, which means you can't use it for parking. Oh, well, Jim, when, when the Hadley flea market was there, they, they had a variance. Oh, the Hadley, flea, Hadley flea market had a variance going all the way back to the woods. Who gave the that ZBA. to them? The Zoning Board of Appeals, Mike, gave them a variance. Okay, yeah. hang on, hang that, on a that second, guys. It, this, this may be a moot point. That line is 300 feet, 300 feet, six inches. Mm -hmm. So that seems to encompass much of the area that you have set aside for parking. Right. And, 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 and all I'm saying is, you know, find out on your, your, the drawing you have. If you, if you can accommodate everything you need, what I'm saying is this year you may be okay. I don't think you're probably, Bill, Mr. Dwyer is probably right. You're all set. But if your project gets bigger, I would assume you may want to put vendors in a back parcel. Which yeah, means, I mean, yeah. All I'm saying is, in the future, you're limited to 300 feet. Got it. This year, you're probably no no problem. But if you decide to go back further than 300 feet, there is an issue. Okay. Did okay. you say your sister on the lot next to you? Yeah. On um, what is it? 69 dash two. Yeah. That's hers. And does she own 69 three? Um, 69.3 and 69.1 is, um, Sabasco, and that's my cousin. Well, you might be able to work out a deal with him. But he's got wood piled all he's over the place. got wood there. there, yeah. Yeah, he's got wood there. Yeah. But I think I'll be fine. I think I'll totally be fine with what he, he put. Is, so. is there going to be one driveway? There's only one driveway. Yep. Um, so yes. that's where that's where Dana comes in. What what was what was the date of your um, festival? Sunday, October second. Okay, ten two. Okay. Just the side a question to the rest of the members of the planning board, uh, as far as the way we should approach the driveway permit. For example, someone came in on. Uh, they wanted to have a, a tasting of their apple cider, and they are they were looking for two driveways, and really, we kind of missed it. It should be only one driveway per lot, and then they went to the uh, Hadley Select Board, and they got two driveways. So uh, we just should be aware of that in the future. Okay, nothing to do with you, Greg. If you only have uh, one driveway, so you're all set. All right. Okay. So what you want to do, you're in a you're in a business local, so-called local business zone. You're permitted use in a permitted zone. Mm -hmm. And if yes. you let's let's say you stay within the 300 feet, you could theoretically have this flea market almost every Sunday, every weekend. Okay. 
Okay, so, um, you know, we want to know that. We have to make sure you got the right parking and things like that. But other than that, it, you're, you're, you, you are in good shape, bottom line. Okay, great. Okay. Um, do we need to do any motions even, Mr. Dwyer? I don't, I don't think so. This seems to be, oh, you, as you said, permitted use in the zone. Right. So I'll simply make, I'll, I will send an email off to the building inspector that says what you want to do, as long as you stay within a 300 foot setback, you are a permitted use in a permitted zone and no further permit for the planning board is required. Okay. Okay. Do we, um, do we only want one driveway instead of one in and one out? No, are but that's you, are what you the saying bylaws, only one's permitted? That's what the bylaw says. Because mm -hmm. uh, what we try to do is limit the number of driveways so you don't have two driveways in, you know, like 16, 18 driveways on a short uh, street. Right. And, no, no. I was yeah. just th thinking for this one day. Well, for, this, for this one day, he only has room for one driveway. I mean, okay, okay. I don't think he wants to be driving over his sister's property and stuff like that, and she doesn't want okay. him over there the way the thing right. is laid out. Okay. So he, he, he should be fine with that. I just think going forward, if this becomes a popular thing, then that might be a traffic snarl if people are turning in while people are trying to turn out. Yeah, and, 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 and during, you know, down, down, just so you know, Mr. Durza, you, you were only giving you zoning opinion here. If you need any kind of other permits, um, Board of Health, whatever it might be, you still would need to get those permits. Okay. okay. And to be for those boards. We're strictly a zoning co comp component here. Okay. Okay. I will, I will be sending you something that will explain and you can send it, sign it and send it back to us. Um, I'm just curious. You said you had sent that drawing in. I don't have any record of having received it. Um, so I talked to, let me pull that up. Hold on. Did you send it to the planning board or the building inspector? Well, it, you're both were, should have been it, both of them because it was on a, it was on a stream an email stream. I just sent it today though. So. Yes, I um, did. Um, I did check, uh, you sent it from your, uh, uh, info at Barnett back. Uh, yeah, Greg, info at Barn Out Back. Um, yeah. <clears throat> I have nothing from you uh, since 2021 when we approved your sign. Okay. Um, and, and that's, uh, let me just search all, that includes the... Um, I, no, thought that, she, I thought she tagged you, but um, because I'd gone originally to the to the town hall to get like guidance on this. And she's the one that said for me to come to this meeting and then tomorrow's meeting. You probably went to the, the um, town administrator's office yeah. and not yeah. to the, you should, you should go to the, either contact the planning board directly or contact the building department directly. They are the primary zoning uh, people. So whatever okay. you set in didn't get forwarded to us, but- uh, yeah. Um, but, uh, I will email you the, um, our form that explains what, what we've done here and what we haven't okay. done. And you'll okay. still have to deal with other boards. So if you, um, but if you had food, for example, a food truck, you'd have to contact board of health and so on. Okay. We don't, um, and you may have to contact board of health with porta potties, but your contractor will take care of that probably. Okay. So you should be all set with us. All right. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Next, Mr. Dwyer. Uh, Lynn Gray. Um, and I don't know if you have anyone with you on Backyard Butcher. I am here. Um, Ivan was not able to attend, but he was supposed to have sent a representative from Backyard Butchers. I don't know any of the numbers or names. Is there anybody from Backyard Butchers here? I look like it. Oh, well, maybe. Nobody speaking. Eight three two number. So I have two. I have uh, two unexplained. Well, I have iPad two. I have uh, an eight three two area code, and I have Sharon Stanton on the list.
Uh, is Sharon Stanton the hand raised? Sharon Stanton is there? raising her hand, but you're on mute. Re un unmute your video, please, Miss Miss Stanton. And your sound. There you go. You're on Hi mute. There. Hi there. Hi. Are you with Backyard Butchers? No, I'm just letting you know I'm not. I'm not with oh. Backyard Butchers. <laughs> okay. And okay. I'm also I'm also iPad too. I just don't know how to use Zoom, so I I'm sorry about that. Okay. Okay. I guess I'm flying solo then. Um, I I think we we touched on this a bit a couple of weeks ago um, as far as the Backyard Butcher setting up in the parking lot of Hampshire Mall. Yes. Um, we had sent in some information. We had gone over it with the select board um, a couple of weeks ago, um, which approved it. But we wanted to share with you today the layout um, and setup for your input and approval as well before they set up for their, um, I believe it's a 10-day setup. Right. So we want to know what the traffic flow is, where they're going to be parked yep. and stuff like that. Sure. Um, I don't know, Bill, if you have the, the stuff or if you want to share my screen or I can share. Uh, why don't I just let you share the screen? Um, okay. That's that's great. Okay. I can do that. Okay. All set. Perfect. I, I did send around what Lynn had sent in. So you should have seen it, but that was a few weeks ago. Okay. So this first, can you all see? Yeah. Okay, perfect. This first um, slide here is a layout of the, the site, the facility. You can see in the comments, uh, I, don't, I don't, I'm without a mouse. I'm going to try and zoom here for you to see. It's really limited to uh, seven to eight parking spaces out here in the side lot for JC Penny. Um, that would include the placement of the tent, um, the truck, the tent and table. There's no power or water required. And it all it is all prepackaged goods that are gonna be sold off of the refrigerated truck. They got their board of health um, permissions and, and permitting. They got the select board to review and approve this. As um, this would demonstrate, you know, we have an inlet here on the South Maple, um, the South side here that they could come in roundabout and an exit as I'm showing arrows. There were supposed to be arrows on here. I apologize for that, but it would be coming in, coming around the island, coming through. Um, there is ample parking in this area. Um, this entrance to JCPenney remains closed due to COVID. Um, so there, this is not a heavily trafficked or heavily parked facility or uh, parking field. Um, so we think that there would be plenty of room for people to get in and out. And if they want to, um, to get out of their vehicles, there are drive through opportunities as well for people who don't want to get out of their car. And then the setup is, is very simple. It's the tent, a couple of tables and the truck. And what, what is the date of this proposed project? Uh, they're to be determined pending approvals from the all of the town um, all of the town approvals that we require here. Okay. It would probably be later. It would probably be later this month if we can get everything in order. Um, we will I'm confirm gonna... the dates, but they, they wanted to be in in place last month. Um, but by the time they got everything in order, um, we were not able to to make that happen for them. So they said that they would um, work with us on the timelines. It would be for ten days. 10 days, okay. All right. Are you going to have any type of cones at all to block off the people that may be queued up to buy this stuff from the other traffic coming through there? Um, we can certainly add cones. Um, I don't know, you know, there's they're sort of natural barriers here. Um, they'll have a, a sign over on this island over here. Um, that says that they can pull in and around. Um, we can certainly add cones to to certainly direct traffic, but we wouldn't. We were not planning on blocking any of the um, interior or exterior ring roads, as that this path here, as everybody is probably familiar, is our bus route. Well, well, I guess my question, the, ring road, that's a, the ring road is also a fire route. Correct, and that's why we don't want to block any of those things okay. off. Yep. Right. Is this frozen meat or refrigerated? 
to be honest with you, I'm not sure if it's frozen or just refrigerated. I just know that it's prepackaged on a refrigerated truck. Okay. I think it, it might be frozen. I, I couldn't say for sure. That's why I was hoping somebody from backyard would okay. be. It has nothing to do with zoning. I did just get an email uh, from Ivan, who is the 1 800 number or 1 832 number. Um, he's apparently having trouble unmuting. And um, I am not. I am not imposing. I haven't muted anyone. Um, so um, it must be his device. You can. Uh, there's a, a microphone icon in the lower left corner of my screen. Uh, I don't know how it comes across on your phone, but you can unmute yourself. Or you could uh, try logging out and logging back in. Ah, that's what he's doing. We'll be patient. You want any good songs to, to lead us in, Lynn, tell, while we're waiting for him? <laughs> uh, no, and you don't want to hear me singing. I promise you that. My son actually cringes Hi, any, any singing or dancing. Trouble. Can y'all hear me now? Yes. Yes, yes. We can hear you now. Okay. Sorry about that. I was, oh, I'm here, I'm here. Please listen. But um, I apologize for the delay that, in that um the meat is frozen. Uh, I believe Lynn explained pretty much everything else really well. I appreciate you doing that. Um, but the meat is completely frozen. And we already do have our health board approval. And we already have our select board approval. I'm hoping the planning board approval is the last item on the list um, so that we can coordinate a, a good start date. And she was correct in it being only a 10-day event. Um, we're really just hoping to market the brand. So we want uh, people to hear the name Backyard Butchers and have friends and family who have already purchased the product. Uh, because we're getting ready to launch an online direct-to-consumer butcher shop. So the goal is for the town of Hadley to know the name Backyard Butchers, to have family and friends who have purchased our high-quality products so that um, when they start seeing these ads on Facebook or maybe even radio ads, they can ask around it. And, and the word of mouth is really what's going to help us out um, to serve your community going forward direct to their homes. So is Omaha Steaks a competitor? May I say that? That that is a competitor, yes. Okay. So, so your your the intent of this is really advertising for online sales to be delivered by like FedEx or UPS or somebody. That is correct. Yes, it'll be uh, dry on dry ice. Um, uh, we're we're uh, getting ready to launch that. We're doing some some soft launches here with friends and family. But we've been uh, I don't know if y'all can pull up just the Backyard Butchers website www.backyardbutchers.com. Uh, you'll see that we're in several locations across the country because we are just now ready and ready to make that official launch. And these little pop-up markets, we've been having some wonder on them, and uh, people are excited for us to start shipping direct to their homes. Um, so we're almost to that point where we can start doing that. Where's your headquarters? So uh, we are our distributor. That's what you're curious about, where the meat comes from. The distributor yeah. uh, is Amy Mackey Company Incorporated. They're based out of Chicago, Illinois, and they're an excellent facility that gets all their USDA permits. Every single package that they uh, they label with our brand has their permit number, which is 6916. Um, that's what really uh, helped us, the health board, uh, help us move forward when they have to see all the proper permits and approvals and the packaging and that, that the products will be sold in. Um, so we don't handle any of the product on site. It's all prepared at, a, at that distributor, and they'll just put the backyard butcher brand on it, and we will turn around and retail it to uh, customers that stop by. Thanks. Okay. All right. Any other questions on the layout? Okay. 
can stop your screen sharing, Lynn. I actually have one other thing after this, if you guys don't mind. Um, sure. Okay. Have we when talked we're... about the hours that it will be there? Is it the same hours yeah. as the mall? Uh, I'm not exactly sure what the mall hours are. If they don't match up, please let us know what our restrictions are. But uh, typically we advertise 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. So we can adjust as needed. Yeah, and we're still 11 to 7 largely uh, Monday through Saturday and 11 to 6 on Sunday. So we'll match up with that or the, the, te the tenant will match up with that. That's 10 to 7 weekdays and 11 to 7 weekends or Sundays? 11 to 7 Monday through Saturday and 11 to 6 on Sunday. So that, that's the requirement. I just need to let the team know we won't be able to open for I mean, I, I don't see any reason why they couldn't be there earlier in the day, especially with um, less traffic, um, you know, at, during those hours. But if, if the planning board sees a, a different need to, to stay at mall hours, we're happy to comply with that. But, you yeah. know, Planet Fitness is open earlier. Um, a couple of our other tenants do open earlier, like Target. So, I mean, I would have no issue with them opening at nine if that's what their preference is. I would need From a planning board point of view, I don't have a, I mean, I don't see a problem starting it earlier than the mall opens. So, Ivan, that would Thank be you. fine with us too. Wonderful. I appreciate the, that. Okay. So nine to seven. One, seven days a yeah, week. Nine to seven, correct. And we actually close Tuesdays just for restocking purposes. Um, but that's just the one exception is Tuesdays. Everything else is nine to seven. So Tuesdays you're closed? Yes, sir. Yeah. I mean, and again, that, that, though, that, those, that's not a big deal. You know, okay. if you want to be open, you're open. If you want to be closed, you're closed. If you only want to be there seven out of 10 days and move out, that's also your business. Nobody's going to force you to stay. <laughs> so I'll make a motion to waive further site plan approval hours nine to seven up to 10 days. I would second that. We have a motion a second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Uh, aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Okay. Thank you very much for that. And like I said, while I have you, I just had a quick question about a repainting project that I wanted to um, seek your guidance on. We are um, looking at refreshing the mall's exterior. It is it's definitely in need of a refreshing if you've been to the property recently. Um, you can see the, the paint colors aren't matching. We've been doing our best to, to paint um, and keep up with the, you know, the conditions. However, they have not been kind to us. So we've actually invested this year and next year in a painting project that would refresh the exterior with these muted, more earth tone colors. Um, and I wasn't sure if this is something that the planning board would be interested in looking at and seeing since um, it is, you know, part of our exterior would be um, adjusting the terracotta color to a more uh, brown, a deeper brown tone for an accent color. And the uh, wool skein and macadamia lighter tones than are, than are actually already in existence. So I wanted to bring you forward to the um, exterior paint colors that we have been toying with, which are these warm stone macadamia and wool skein colors, and sort of the um, give you an idea about how we would be implementing this. It would be in two phases. One would be part of this fall project, if the weather would be um, cooperative with us. Um, and the second part of it would be to do the rest of the exterior um, come the spring of next year. Um, and I have this presentation. I haven't, I, I wasn't submitting anything formally yet because I was looking for guidance as to whether this was something that would need to go through planning board, through Tommy, through, you know, what, what channels would we need to do to get this approved? I mean, the planning board would like to see what you're going to do. Okay. And I would, I would touch bases with the building inspector to see if you need any kind of a building permit to paint something of this magnitude. 
Mm -hmm. uh, normally painting a building is not a big deal, but when you have something this big, it may fall into a different category. I don't know. The building inspector could answer that question. And I do agree with you that the mall, Hampshire Mall does need some uh, touch, some freshening up on the exterior. And then the individual tenants would have their own color. They would come to us at their entrances. Is that the idea? Or? Yeah, those are sort of a, a different, you know, a different beast for us because some of them have different rights to their own um, storefronts like Dick Sporting Goods, PetSmart, um, and obviously Target who owns their own parcel. This would just be for the parts that are mall, um, mall facade, mall entrances, um, with the exception of the, the Cinemark building, especially that, that is in desperate need of, of touch up and painting. And like I said, I have some of these existing photos to, to demonstrate um, what's existing. And then um, this last slide here demonstrates how we would be implementing that. This, this largely demonstrates what the, the first phase would be. It would really be sort of the backside of the mall here. Um, into the Cinemark entrance, the Cinemark building itself all the way around back. And that's really all we have the money for this year. Um, and then next year we would propose doing the remainder of, uh, of the property, which would be the JC Penny building, which is part of our, our purview. Um, and, and you can see I've, I've laid out here also um, the timing for everything, the, the 2022 part, the Cinemark part, and then 2023 JC Penney and the rest of the mall, which the rest of the mall at that point, once we took care of this area here in blue and in orange, um, the yellow and the green would be part of next year's project. Okay. So Tell Dick me. would remain as they are, PetSmart would remain as they are, Target would remain as they are. It's truly just these main entryways, the, um, the loading dock area, the main entrance on the front of the building, the, the JC Penny, but that's all second phase and first phase would be blue and orange. Okay, looks good. So I think when you settle on your final paint colors, you can just touch base with us at this, um, administrative session uh -huh. but i i don't i think they all look fine i just yeah, i agree it looks nice yeah okay i i mean this is the direction we would like to go um so if there's a, a more formal presentation other than nope. okay what you what what you're showing is perfectly adequate okay this is i think these are where we've landed we didn't want to we didn't want to toy around with it too much but we did want to do some kind of refresh so just wanted to make sure that that was something that would be, you know, that would be okay. Yeah, should be no problem. So okay. do, you, we, do you want a motion to waive further site plan approval? Or do you want to come back with the colors you're actually, are these the colors you're actually going to use? These are the colors we would like to use, yes. Okay, I mean, there's no, we have no problem with those colors. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So if you could just, um, yeah, we, we can take a vote, but um, would you uh, just, I don't think you've emailed us this particular one No, yet. this came together, you know, like I said, we've been sort of working on it and then, you know, fall is upon us. And if we're going to try to do something this fall, we're, you know, we're kind of behind the gun on, on weather. So um, I can send you the, um, the actual file that we're looking at, Bill, if that helps. Yes, that would be fine. Uh, we'll okay. uh, attach it to... We'll, we'll we'll send Jim will send something to the building inspector saying we've waived further site plan approval for repainting according to the proposed design, and uh, we'll just attach that. Perfect. That's all I was looking for was some guidance there. Thank you so much. I'm sorry. This is Ivan with Backyard Butchers again. Uh, I heard that there was an approval, but I since I've had the two other board approvals. I'm not sure if that means that we're okay to negotiate a start date with the mall. Can you guys clarify on that? You've given, you've received planning board approval for what you want to do. I don't know if there's any other town approvals. I will, I will give a email out to the um, building inspector and other appropriate departments within the town saying that we've waived any further reviews. And depending what, if there's any other town reviews, if not, then you can start scheduling. Yeah, I, I will send uh, both you and Lynn a uh, 
a form we use that says what we what we have approved and what we have not approved. And Perfect. Uh, you can go from there. Thank you. I appreciate y'all's time. Y'all have a good evening. Okay, so I'll make a motion to uh, waive uh, further site plan approval for the new color scheme per the proposal presented. Second. We have a motion. We have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Great. Thank you, gentlemen. I really appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Lynn, just make sure you get that email to Bill so we can attach it. That's all. Will do. I'll do it right now. Thank you. All right, Mr. Dwyer, anybody else? Oh, Sharon uh, Stanton. Sharon Stanton. Hi. Hello. <laughs> um, let's see. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, so I'm, Sh my name's Sharon Stanton, obviously I live at 100 Chamura road and I sent over some things, some videos and a letter oh. to, um, the town administrator, I guess it was, I spoke to Jane and I just wanted to find out if that was received by the planning board and if I'm dealing with the right people and I'm sorry about the zoom thing. I'm trying to put my pick. I'm trying to. No, no problem with the zoom thing. <laughs> okay. I don't, I don't believe the planning board has received any of the videos because the town administrator um, or at least the, uh, uh, who was it this morning at the meeting? She was having hey. trouble. Jane, Jane was having trouble from the from the administrator's office getting the videos and forwarding them, forwarding them to the appropriate uh, departments. Um, oh. We've heard about your issues with the parking and stuff like that. And yeah. unfor unfortunately, I don't believe the planning board has much to do or could can do much about this. Really, with the um, police and fire and the select board and possibly even a board of health that can help you with that. It's out of the, I believe it's out of the purview of the planning, the out of purview of zoning. Right. Okay. Yeah. No. I, I thought Perfect. it was more of like a select board kind of thing, but, um, um, yeah. So what are we talking I about? Will, oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. So, yeah. so, uh, there are, she has concerns about some of the, uh, trail usage, at the end of Chamura Road, the access to the trails at the end of Chamura Road, right. uh, bad behavior by people accessing the trails at the end of Chamura Road. So it's uh, it ties in with uh, the deal the town made with Kestrel to open up the trail system, I think, to some extent. Um, <clears throat> but it does not seem to be a zoning issue. It is a it's an enforcement issue. Right. Um, I'm sorry. I, I don't. Can I just add a few things? Um, I actually went to the fire department today because uh, I wasn't aware when I sent over the letter and the other um, videos and everything that the cul-de-sac is actually a requirement for fire apparat apparatus turnaround. So I, I'm thinking that, you know, people shouldn't be parking within the turnaround and there shouldn't probably be 25 or 30 cars parking up there or even more than 10 cars parking up there. But um, I, I, might, I just wanna clarify that my issue is really less, my issues are many. <laughs> so there's things that go on up there because people park up there. But it, recently in the last, we moved here three years ago and now within the last two years, it started to, the parking um, has started to increase the number of cars. So that now 
um, on a Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday evenings, and on the weekends, as I mentioned, there's sometimes any day, any time of day, it could be anywhere from like eight to 30 cars up there. So it's not a parking lot. It's not a parking lot. I mean, there might be roadside parking. So, um, so my those are more my concerns. And then of course, with all that comes, um, the things that, that I, some of the things that I, that I, that I mentioned. So, um, yeah, that's, those are my concerns, okay. but so, I will. We, yeah, we do appreciate, we do understand. Um, I just, I just want to put in context what we do. We're, we get involved in the permitting stage, although mm -hmm. we were never involved in the permitting of the trail system. That's outside of zoning completely. Yeah. Uh, but we have no enforcement authority. So once we permit something and say, mm -hmm. okay, it's okay to go ahead and do what you asked. If you do it this way, do it the way you showed us, uh, then, uh, then <laughs> fine. But yeah. once, uh, once we do that, we have no further authority and okay. any enforcement goes to other offices. I mean, we just, okay. we, we don't carry badges. The law gives us no authority. I so, understand. Uh, we're um, we're sympathetic, but we there's it, it's just outside of our jurisdiction. Yeah, no, that's no problem. I actually, um, I I was told by the um, person in the, the I think Jane. I think she thought. I think she told me that it was probably a planning board issue. When I thought it, maybe it was more like a select board issue, and I'm yeah. now finding out that it's also a fire department issue. <laughs> so um, I figured I'd come in and check and see um, what, you know, what you suggested. And I've done that. So I appreciate your time. Great. And um, that's it. Okay. Thank you. Good luck. Good luck. Sorry, good sorry for yeah. the Zoom stuff. Have a good night. Bye-bye. <laughs> Mr. Dwyer, your assistant seems to be persistent. Uh, yes, I think I'm being told that it's dinner time, but I am <laughs> going to just say no, <laughs> because I know there's a big bowl of dry food out there. <laughs> he wants wet food. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, that is it for our uh, business, our walk-in business. Uh, I see Mr. Comey is with us. Good evening, board. Um, so since our last meeting, I've been working with um, working on the permitting guide, updating links. Um, I have nothing to share with you. Um, I did come to town hall on Friday. Um, thank you, Jim, for um, having those um, final hard copies of the um, housing survey. Um, I was able to pick that up and I was actually able to meet with Didi who happened to be in the hallway. So we talked a little bit um, and um, I'm going to try to make an appointment with the building department to come and see how, um, you know, conversations with them can align to, to make that permitting guide better. I know that um, they're currently operating with a electronic permitting system and it's likely that maybe one day the planning board may have access slash um, it may be helpful or to understand um, what can be um, how per electronic permitting can help the planning board um, with uh, retention of records and um, how how it could be helpful um, in understanding what types of permits have been pulled for certain parcels and knowing some of the history about that. I know I know though um, you have a lot of institutional knowledge in the board and as as Jim was talking about um, certain permits for certain parcels within town, um, this would make it easier by uh, <laughs> maybe examining how the planning board can um, loop on to some sort of electronic permitting. But that conversation um, will be planned. Um, and maybe it might be helpful to have a planning board member there too. Um, but I'll let you know when I come to town hall um, to meet with the planning, uh, to meet with the building department, probably DD, um, and and see how that can align with the permitting guide. Yeah, um, by, I, by way of information, yes, yeah. your, 
It's a good thing that we do have the institutional memory because we don't have access to our files. So Jim or Bill or are we going to get a place to meet? Are we going to have access to our files? I mean, it's like we're wandering through the desert with no place to land. Good question. Wish, wish we had a good answer. Okay. We supposedly may get a place <laughs> in either the library or the senior center or the old library. They don't know. They're working on that idea. Once and if we have to go back to live meetings, the live meetings will most likely be in the library. The old library or the no, new, the new library. library. The meeting room as you walk in, the first, the, for the room immediately on your left where they have like the conferences now where the select board meet also. So they would acknowledge that they would accept this because way back when they were not going to accept this. But that was not um, their fault. This, well, I, I don't think this is owned by the town. Yes, correct. It is governed by the Board of Selectmen. Okay, I hear you. Yeah. So there, there's a difference between where we meet and where our files live. Right. We want both. Um, and we're probably going to end up meeting away from our files anyway. Yeah. Uh, we'd probably meet either, most likely in the library, possibly in the senior center. The acoustics are horrible there, but uh, better in the uh, library, I think. But we would not have our files there. We would have them uh, probably in the basement of the old library when that gets renovated. But there's no timeline for that. Right. J just for everybody's information, they are scanning. They have scanned virtually all the drawings of the building department and put them into electronic files. She is the lady that is doing that is currently scanning planning board files and putting them in electronically and getting rid of all the duplication, which evidently there is a lot of, and we know that. So they're getting rid of the unneeded files, any paper files, drawings that have been um, scanned are being kept. We're not getting rid of any of that stuff. Um, that has already proven to be a benefit because the building department said something came up today for I forgot which issue it was, and they were able to go electronically and immediately find the drawings and address a con question or concern or whatever it might be. So that is that, that scan that we got a <laughs> probably five years ago is really paying benefits to all the departments. When when they're done with the planning board files, they're going to scan the DPW files. Now, they're now, not scanning is, every document. They're only scanning the drawings. Yeah, this is the large format scanners. So these are the drawings going through. At some point, between Jim and I, we have most, I was say the last 15 years, uh, we, we have some record for the last 15 years of everything, even if we don't have the full paper file access. Right. Yeah, and the problem with that is we got them on a personal computer, which in theory is not right. However, we have no other place to put them. And we have requested of the town administrator that because we, and we, we as a board cannot access the town uh, electronic filing system because you, if you can't do it with a private personal computer, it can only be done with a town computer. So they're looking to get at least Bill and myself town laptops or whatever it might be so that we can transfer our files, have them saved, and have access to all this other stuff. Just to test our institutional memory, what were they looking for? It was, a, it was that. They were, there was an issue with uh, Popeye's uh, pouring, uh, pouring surplus cooking fat into the storm drain. So they needed to know where, <clears throat> what drain ran where. Yeah. But the, the Popeye's drawings and something else showed that. And it was a quick resolution, actually. So the system works when you have the right information in it. <laughs> now we're trying to get it in there. 
Okay. I'm sorry, Ken. Oh, no. Thank you. Um, yeah. So um, I will try to schedule something with the building department to, to come out and maybe have a conversation with regards to that, as well as um, updating the permitting guide. Um, some of the other conversations I, uh, that I have in my notes from the last meeting um, include the whole uh, food trucks, agritourism. I was wondering, um, and it, it's actually timely. I'm, and as you've had two items before you, um, this evening in your administrative session. Um, I have just recently finished some work for the town of Amherst. They're looking at temporary slash special event um, type zoning um, and what types of um, permitting processes would the, the town would go through if an applicant were to come for something like the the meats, the the meat sales um, and the parking lot. Um, but I don't know. And I, I, I guess my my note to myself here is um, maybe just clarifying um, if the board is looking at specific types of zoning and or regulations that um, you know, probably would require appearances before the planning board more often. Uh, just knowing of some of the the various things that are going on in town, and you know, even driving through Hadley, um, I'm like, oh, I think they were they were at the planning board meeting, um, and it was an administrative session, or did they get approval from the planning board? It, it, those, those types of um, you know questions come to my mind as I drive through Hadley um, in, in the various parts. But I I guess. Um, you know, using this time this evening, my, my appointment with you to clarify that particular ask. Um, okay. that, I think we can, uh, between Bill and I, we can answer your question pretty succinctly. Um, I would say number one is the permitting guide. I think we okay. all agree on that. That That is coming up to be having direction for for applicants that come in for various things is becoming more and more imperative that we get something going on that because they're coming in and they're saying, well, I have this, I have that. Well, yeah, but you don't have it all. And a lot of, like like Bill said in the past, the big boys, big girls know what to do. It's yes. the little small boys and girls that are doing this as a mom and pop operation that get lost in the process. So by giving them this- in Intentionally the or unintentionally. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> by giving that, it'll give it'll help them do stuff. One of the things that came up in today's um, building meeting that we have a weekly building meeting with the building inspector and a bunch of other boards, and it was brought up by a, a member, I think it was brought up by the uh, temporary town administrator that where she used, where she's worked, they actually have a sign-off sheet for all the boards, appropriate boards to sign off, either approved not approved or does not apply. And it's the applicant's responsibility to bring this through the system and get the signatures, not anybody else but the applicant. And that way, the, life, the, appro the appropriate licensing authority will not issue a license until this sheet is completed. And that's typically either gonna be the building inspector or the uh, select board's licensing authority. And I've actually put something together quickly for that that I'll, I'll afford you, Kim, to give you an idea of what, what they're talking about. So along I mean, the lines of institutional memory that you were mentioning also, we've had some turnover in town hall. Um, yeah. Jennifer, who has been there for several years, is out on medical leave, and Jane has stepped in. And um, Jane doesn't have as much depth of experience. And it was Jane, in fact, who, uh, who directed uh, Sharon Stanton to talk to the planning board. Um, not, not knowing that uh, it certainly makes sense because we're, we're, we really have our finger on a lot of things that's going on. And so it certainly made sense, but it just turned out it was a, uh, it was a dead end in that particular case. So yes, having the permitting guide and then a, deliverable from the permitting guide, a form to uh, document the fact that you have followed the map uh, would be very helpful and very timely. Yep. The, uh, 
I would, as far as the food trucks go and those issues, that is something that is becoming more and more important because as Bill mentioned in today's meeting with the building inspector, a number of years ago, um, bed and breakfast were hot. We put his own bylaw in place and we virtually had one applicant after the what after the after all the dust settled. The same thing with home occupation. We've had a few of those. We put a zone bylaw in place, and we've had only a few in the last several years. Well, right now, the there are several, I guess, farm stands, for lack of a better term, that are getting very creative with um, what the agricultural exemption allows, and to the point that. One of them has probably got as many cars on a on a weekend or sometimes on a night week night as the Hampshire Mall may have in part of their parking lot, and it's all under the auspices of well I'm agriculturally exempt, so we need to do and they're they're, they're pushing the envelope for sure, but we'd like to, I don't know if we need a, so much a zone bylaw as much as it may even be a general bylaw, we don't, we, we're not sure. We do have a committee in town looking at all of the, the, the general bylaws to update as required. And by coincidence, our next meeting is uh, a week from tomorrow. Oh, we come today, I'm sorry, a week from today, it's in the, I say it's gonna be in the, in the uh, safety complex. So we're, we meet about once a month and we have assignments, you look at this section, you look at this section, et cetera, then report back. We've only been doing this now about three months, three meetings. So we're still in its infancy, um, but we anticipate making some decent progress over the next, it'll probably take a, a, a several years to get where we wanna be, but we don't need to present everything all at once. Once we find a hot topic, if we find one, Maybe it might be the food trucks. We can address them as the need arises at town meeting. So what it say, actually has popped up that there's something related to that. That's event venues. And Tom and Didi may have more to say about it. But what, what came out in this afternoon's meeting was that uh, a property in Hadley is applying for its third tent permit for an event. And it's a residential property. Uh, in an agricultural residential district, and uh, it just um, it just raises the question: Are they putting themselves out as a as an event venue for weddings, what have you? Um, and uh, at at the moment, uh, now we've we had a. Uh, had the whole wedding and reception for my niece at our house. And we had the whole wedding reception for my daughter at our house, um, but they were three years apart and not all in the same summer. Um, and uh, so that that may be something. Obviously, there are things like, uh, what's the one in Whateley, Ogunquit Farm? Uh, yeah, the uh, Quan Quan. Yeah, okay. So there, there, are, there are event venues out there. And, um, and that's fine. And again, in Hadley, where the agricultural residential district is three quarters of the town, maybe if you have a 10 acre parcel, uh, an event would not be burdensome. But if you have a uh, acre and a half, maybe you don't want to be hosting a wedding for 150 people. So um, along the lines of food trucks and agritourism event venues seem to be uh, something that is uh, is <clears throat> raising its head and they seem to all be in the same uh, the same broad category I, I think it probably would be very helpful even if it's not um, something that the planning board is contemplating at the moment what I can do is share with you um, for instance, I also consult with the town of Granby and at the last town meeting, we, the, pl the planning board, uh, the town approved a special event venue bylaw, um, zoning bylaw, which required. That'd be great. Could you yeah. just, just forward that to us? I mean, that would be an excellent starting point. Yeah. And so, and then also, um, the whole agritourism component, there are agriculturally related uses that you can probably, um, get around with asking for a site plan approval 
um, if they're for certain types of um, activities like mazes or you know these these events that may happen right abutting the road. Um, but I'll share that language with you too. I think that could be helpful. Yeah. That, that would be a big help, Kim. Thank you. Um, so the permitting guide is, uh, is obviously going to be my first thing. Um, and with that said, um, I know, Jim, you had just mentioned the, the form, um, the sign-off sheet. Is that, is, you know, with the town also now using electronic permitting, um, at least for the building department, um, is there a component, and I, I think that airs like a, a airs a um, sense of efficiency, right? That you, you know, you have the ability to check with the building department or maybe see, um, I, and I don't necessarily know, and hopefully my conversation with them will lead to understanding what capabilities the, the person applying for a permit would have like if they have like a return receipt and or you know can see when they submitted it and if there are comments that they can receive the email uh, i don't know if that's something but with that said um i think that also allows for the discussion that you mentioned with regards to other departments signing off on it and i know that there may be an opportunity um electronically to do that that makes it easier um but I th also think, and you know, a suggestion or a recommendation for the board is to look at a way to, um, I don't know, it, it, it's one of those things where I know in other communities where I'm working, um, they're trying to get away from the go to every department um, and, you know, go to, if, especially if they happen to be in different buildings or different parts of town. Um, but, you know, obviously I, I look to the planning board to see, you know, um, how to incorporate that within the permitting guide, but as well as maybe play on the improvements that the town may be looking at with the electronic permitting. That that's a great question, and I don't know the answer to it. It would be it would be great if we could do it electronically, and it, if it would just flow um, without knowing what the capabilities are of the pro of the electronic program. I can't answer that question. Okay. Um, just, I just don't know. We, but the one thing that I don't want to do, even if it's electronic, is I don't want to make the burden on the town. The burden for making sure everything flows from point A to point B is the applicant. Mm -hmm. And that's for them to follow through. Like, I don't want them to come back and say, well, you've had this thing now for three months and you haven't approved it. It hasn't gone through all the channels. It's not my fault. That's what I don't want to see. I want to make sure that the applicant is 99% responsible for this going through the channels and not the town making sure it goes through the channels. Okay. And if that's possible with electronics, that's fine. I mean, we could certainly sign it electronically. Right. Okay. Um, so what I'll do is I will send you those um, to bylaws and then as i mentioned um probably within the next two three weeks um come out to town hall uh, and maybe invite jim or bill um, to have a conversation with the building department regarding permitting uh, i'll probably be able to clarify and if i need to reach out to other um departments and or boards um that'll be something that i i can do too over the next couple of weeks Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. Um, Want to set an next meeting? Mr. Kim? Um, do you have anything in your second week of October? Or no, maybe not. Second meeting, the 18th? Um, that's a two. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, the, the, the October 18th right now was wide open. Okay. Yeah, let's plan for that. Okay. I'll make myself available. And in the meantime, we'll um, make those emails out to the okay. board. Mr. Quinlan, do you have anything for Ken? 
no, I, I do want to mention though we I like the idea. So our tasking is is great, but our department's not saying any one in particular at all because I'm very busy as well. But a lot of times we still have to chase that signature. You know, we, we'll have to go to, to that department, whichever it be, and you know, deliver something or ask them to check the tasks, you know, just to check their records. And, you know, because they are busy. So having them go, that was the old style with a, with a sign-off sheet, sometimes covers us and saves us the time on the other hand. Um, you know, eventually, hopefully, the apartments will have the extra help or, you know, the burden will ease up that they have the time. But we do have, I do see that sometimes with the sign-offs. So you hit that on the nail. Yeah, and and the thing about the sign up, I mean, even if it's paper for the time being, it's it's more than we do right now. Right now, it's all, hey, have you done this? Have you have you done this? And there's no trail. It's horrible. and yeah, it probably will be cumbersome initially, and once we get at it and understand it, it can probably very well become electronic. However, at least even if it's a paper trail initially, it's way more than we have right now. And it truly puts the burden on the applicant to follow through. Like I said, if they don't need the signature, there's a do not apply in there. Just, just put your signature there and say, okay, we don't, the planning board has nothing to do with this. The board of health or whoever it might be. So I'll send it out to you guys to take, take a look at. And, you know, if you think somebody else should be added to this, I want to put it out that we all agree that this is the list that needs to look at it. Okay, it has it has a finger in the pie, if you would. So, Jim, is that list that you have? Are those the ones that usually meet um, routinely when you talk about either development applications and or other things that are? I, I will quickly tell you who I have on it right now. I have the assessor, the building inspector, conservation, fire, health, board of health, planning board police, DPW, select board, town clerk, and then a licensing authority, which is part of the select board. Okay. Right. Add tax collector. I Do you think that the tax collector would, should be on there too? Yeah, I think That's so. Fine. But we can't issue permits if someone's delinquent. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, no, no that's fine. I will add that. Yeah, okay. Um, because I was going through the town hall in my mind. I said, what else is there up there? So I don't think ZBA should be decent. Do you think ZBA should be on there, Mr. Quinlan? Nope. The one community, it was back when I worked in West Hampton. It was on the sign-off sheet. And so what the board ended up doing, and, it, and there was actually a com conflict, or they didn't get along, the prior commissioner and the ZBA, because they weren't, he wasn't getting that sign-off but they really shouldn't be signing off unless we, you know, deny the permit right, for some okay. reason. So what the board ended up doing was leaving it on the sign off and the requirement for that sign off was then for the applicant to come to me and I crossed off who was required and who wasn't. So that way there, the ZBA was happy, you know, Okay. but yes. there was some big we'll, conflicts we'll, because of that. <laughs> okay. We'll, we'll leave them off for the time because I mean, yes. unless you deny them, or something, or the planning boards deny the site plan. The site plan approval is, is going to be, well, it may fall into this stuff too, but those are unique circumstances. We're looking more, I'm looking more at the, like the, the person that wants to come in for the, for the venue, for the, this, for the, that, you know, little small things. Right. Okay, good. Yep. All right. And we're going to tell them that's the next step if we can't. So that's, that's the way to do it. It shouldn't be. Okay. It. All right. Very good. Okay. Ken. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Anything else for Ken? Thank you. Have a good couple of weeks. Have a good six weeks till we see you again. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to stick around. Okay, that's fine. All right. Um, next thing we have is I sent around, we talked about last time about wanting to have a formal requirement for drawing as opposed to we get we we had enough issues with hand sketches and I sent down around the the items that I put out the planning board requirements for submittal of drawings for waiver requests <clears throat> and public hearings. Have we had a chance to look at them? 
I haven't uh, gone all through them. I sent it out yeah. to the planning. The planning board received it. Uh, Mr. Quinlan received it, and a DPW superintendent. Mr. Quinlan and a DPW had no comments or no further comments. Yeah, I'm trying to bring it up so I can okay. put it on the screen. I'm opening my copy. I think it's good to have some minimum requirements, but my thought was that we don't want to make the, you know, the guy who's adding a garage on his house or something overburdened. Exactly. Okay, I, I don't see as the first seven requirements being overly burdensome. They've got to be better than... Well, I saw a cat, and a lot of people don't have, you know, that, that means you've got to go find and pay, and pay a draft. I mean, all right. Nope. Oh, nope, I see. Nope. It's or formal hand drawing. Okay. Or formal hand drawing. And formal no, is... No, you, you get formal the is pencil, very subjective. Pencil and, pencil and engineer scale out and some uh, triangles, and you start drawing straight and square lines on a piece of paper. Or take a piece of drafting paper on a grid paper. And draw up the scale on your grid paper. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I was I, I did glance at that, and I the first thing that came to mind was that car's hard cider. Yes. You know, yeah. I drive by there, and his sketch looked nothing like you know. When I saw his sketch, I thought he was going to be parking right on the road, but he's got a big hedgerow, and then he's got a, a greenhouse. I mean, I don't know how he's even going to fit parking in there. But it didn't, it didn't look and, like and I guess part. I guess that's the point that when the, the building inspector, the DT DPW went out there, what you saw on the paper and what you see in real life is different. Yeah. And this way, if it's drawn to scale, I mean, I'm not, I'm, I don't think anything on there. If you have, if you're able to do this yourself, then you should be able to go out and spend. I mean, yeah, you may have to buy a, a scale ruler. All right. Mm -hmm. Um, other than that, you're not. There's nothing on the on the first seven items that are extravagant. I, no, honestly, the, the, the last several, yes. However, if you're if you're going to do something simple, we can waive much of what's on the last several. Yeah, I, I would say just take out the uh, e even that note. Items one through seven will not be waived. I think we can waive anything if it <clears throat> strikes our. If it strikes us that it, it's not needed, but um, to yeah, the point about know. making it hard to put in a garage, I think that's the one we'd be want to want to be hardest on because somebody's going to put in back, a garage. Right. We want to be sure it's set back the right, not have them put it ten feet from the property line and say, "Oh, the planning board said it was okay." Right, right. Bad example. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll just take the note out. That's fine. Well, yeah, I mean, I'll, I, put, I'll put, I'll number each one of the notes and I will just take out, I mean, I'll label each, I'll number each one of those things. Yeah. So if somebody has a question, they can point to the number and I'll take out the note. That's fine. No problem. I'm, I'm not trying to be argumentative. I just, I know that, you know, Jim and I are by our trade drawing things to scale geometrically, you know, aligned and what's parallel and what's not and all that comes second nature. But for a lot of other people, I've had a lot of clients that couldn't draw their way out of a, you know, a paper bag. So, you know, so that's where I, you know, I guess, yeah, if, if they could get someone, it didn't have to be CAD, but they could get someone else to do a, um, yeah, I see what you're saying. It's got to be representational of the actual scale. So, yeah. So, and I, I think if, if we have some short of being arbitrary and capricious, we can say, you know, that's close enough. And for this matter, that's okay. But for something else, it needs to be more precise. Yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of muddy. So right. that, it, is CAD is CAD such a technical term that it only refers to a particular type of program? Because I think there are different ones, but they can be a thousand dollars or more for, for the software. Computer aided design. There is probably 
untold amount of computer aided design programs that you can purchase. Right. Yeah. You could probably use Adobe. Um... Yeah, there, there's, I mean, obviously you have AutoCAD, but then you also have, oh my, the last three turn, the last three letters being CAD, you have ProCAD, MiniCAD. Uh, oh, uh, uh, you just just type in CAD on your computer and see how many things come up. You'll be amazed. I used to have a program that would uh, let me uh, design design my yard, mm. yep. and <clears throat> that produced a scale drawing. And that was, uh, you know, three computer operating systems ago. So I probably didn't pay more than 50 bucks for it. So, so are uh, you saying that what Mr. Durzo did earlier this evening would not be acceptable to the board, right, if we approve this? Yes. That's a good example. Yes, that would or, not be acceptable. Or this, the cider house. This, uh, that, the drawing there didn't represent as Mark was saying, what exactly was presented to us. And yeah. we've had people with a history in the past are cagey as a fox, what they present and what they don't put down. And then all of a sudden, the next meeting, is, it appeared. Uh, yeah. I mean, if the person has the know-how that they want to apply for something and they start saying that they're going to try to act as their own for lack of a better term, contractor, and they say they don't know how to do a freehand drawing, I'll be honest, they should not be acting as their own contractor. Sure. Agreed. I, and you know, you're right. We have to have a certain baseline because if we are arbitrary and capricious, uh, we could get into a little bit of an argument when, with some people. Yeah. So. But I agree that there should be some... There should be some leeway because there are there are some you know issues that come before us that really aren't so critical. Well, exactly. Yeah. If something is going to be permanent, then we should be a little more pay, pay a little more attention to it. But as, if Mister Durza said tonight he's going to be there once a year, uh, it's a little different. Yeah, no, that, but that, that, and that's a good point. But you know? even. If we, even if we take this, off the note, one if we take off things will not be waived, and we have these as a list with a number next to them, then we we should be in good shape. If we if we really think it should be waived or could be waived, we can do it. Yeah. So even to Mr. Durza's point, no one really was understanding what his what he was talking about about parking behind until I was able to pull up the tax map. That's correct. And if he had started with the tax map as his base and sketched something on the tax map, we would have been, uh, that, that might have been good enough. That's, that is correct. For his purposes. It, it would have been very easy to draw that at 50 to 1 and show a 50 to 1 drawing will allow you to draw four hundred something about 400 feet by. 600 feet on a piece of paper on 11 by late and a half by 11 piece of paper. So there's plenty of room to do a drawing on eight and a half by 11. Yeah. Without, um, without too much effort, it takes a little experimentation, but you can go to the town website, you can designate your building lot and you can print it out at, uh, in fact, you could probably define a scale to print it out at. If, uh, if it's going to be 50 to 1, uh, or at least show what the scale is. Um, and you can print out right. a, a plot of your <laughs> parcel that will fill an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper, and then um, you can sketch on that to scale. Yeah. Um, no, so yeah, I, yeah, understandably. I mean, they could take the GIS map and print their site and then use Google satellite view to help them draw accurately over that, you know? No, no yeah. it won't, it won't work. Uh, obviously there are limitations to the uh, GIS system uh, and, and every house that is shown on the GIS system is being over the property line. 
might well not be, but um, you know, depending on what you're asking for, that's a good starting point. Uh, Randy Eiser point, pointed out at uh, the development team meeting last week, I think it was, that in some communities, they're not, they don't worry about, is it, is it burdensome? They, they ask for a full survey to put up a garage. Yeah. Where in our case, if it, if it, if the garage was going to be 15 feet, two inches off the property line, maybe we do want a full survey, but if the garage is going to be put in the middle of a five acre parcel, maybe right. we just need a tax map. Right. Um, I think this is, you know, this is good. We just have to figure out how to, uh, I don't know whether we have to, uh, should adopt this as a regulation or just as a policy. Uh, I know uh, going back to Ken uh, that what somewhere on the back burner is uh, planning board uh, regulations. And I know you also talked about adopting standard conditions for site plan approval. Um, I don't know, are these things that, that should, we should have a hearing before we adopt them or are they, uh, low level enough to adopt just by majority vote? Um, it would be a majority vote, but I, you should, I think you should have a hearing um, for any sort of um, overall policy um, or regulation that the board would adopt. Um, wouldn't require a super majority. Um, okay. But I think if you were to utilize this as a policy, just suggesting that in your read of the zoning bylaw, um, if there is a requirement for a site plan, this is what your expectations are for a site plan. Um, I think, you know, absent this particular language, um, I don't think that it, it prevents you from suggesting to someone that wants to apply to the board that this is your expectation of what um, the board will be reviewing. Uh, Even if they've got an agricultural, perceived agricultural exemption. Um, sure. I think, um, you know, I think, yeah. Yeah, I think, um, particular if there's a, a building, um, you know, the, the building department would, would be requiring that. But again, I think the conversation about the agricultural and agritourism, um, that's something for the board to think about, um, you know, and I'm, starting to, while I'm listening to your conversation, I'm starting to compile some resources regarding that. But um, yeah, I think that if you were to, even in your conversations with a future applicant, say, you know, it suggests you have a site plan and these are the requirements, unless it's very clear that you can submit a drawing that is not, you know, to these particular standards, then I think you have the ability to just tell someone, yeah, we're expecting, you know, a formal hand drawing and or CAD design um, drawing with these particulars. Um, I, or maybe not even those particulars, but, um, you know, a more formal drawing. Um, you know, I, for instance, when I was town planner, uh, when I was actually, when I was working in Florida, um, I had an applicant for, uh, and I was also the zoning enforcement. I had an applicant submit a drawing for a shed on a napkin, a napkin uh, with pencil. Um, and, you know, the expectation was that the building department was like, okay, Ken, he submitted a drawing and there's nothing in our bylaw that suggests that you can accept it. Um, so, that was my first thing that I approved based on that, um, that, you know, it ended up being uh, a good um, hand drawn on a napkin. Um, but I, I don't think that this prevents you from telling someone at the moment, you know, absent changing the bylaw or putting these in your rules and regulations that, that there's an expectation for a more formal drawing. Okay. May need to figure out. We, should, we should formally ad adopt this by via a public hearing, Ken. 
I think with all, um, you know, future rules and regulations like Bill just suggested, um, you know, if you were to adopt a policy that says, um, because what I'm going to suggest when we end up getting to the rules and regulations and compiling everything, this is going to be on your rules and regulations. Your bylaw will say something. This will just now formalize what the bylaw says. So, yes, you would, uh, as with any rules and regulations that you may have adopted in the past, for instance, the um, affordable housing payment in lieu of when, you know, when we end up working on that, that's going to be something that you do through the planning board's pu public hearing process, um, but wouldn't require, a, you know, a town meeting action. So um, this is something that you could adopt um, and have this present, maybe post it um, on the town's website for the expectations regarding what your what your drawings would look like. So in the meantime, we could informally adopt this and just put it out to anybody who comes in and say, this is the requirement. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so we can utilize this in the meantime and adopt this formally when maybe when we adopt the whole, all the regulations, if you would. Right. Hopefully. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, right. I think we, we do the same thing with the, um, with the standard conditions so that I don't have to read off the same three pages of boilerplate at every, uh, right. You know. Okay. All right. The other thing that, that we didn't, we, we sort of gave Mr. Durza a pass on was the uh, requirement that all drawings be submitted by the Friday before the Tuesday meeting. So, um, that's on our uh that's always on our uh agenda uh but um yeah, we do have to remember to enforce that right yeah i didn't think of that one okay but that also is something that we can we can set up as right. as part of a waiver procedure <clears throat> we would uh, have the plans be submitted in advance the plans be drawn to this standard, <clears throat> and we also want that uh, disclaimer signed in advance. If you're going to come in for a waiver, tell us you understand what the waiver is and isn't, and that you um, and that that you can accurately show what you're asking us to waive. Okay. How do you get a true north arrow? On one of these sketches, do you need a compass or what do you do, Jimmy? Compass. Compass. Okay. Yeah. I mean, we're. I mean, we're looking for. You know, I mean, if it's, if it's pointing yeah. plus or minus ten degrees north, we don't really gotcha. care as long as gotcha. north is in this general area, not opposite. Okay. Yeah. I was in a. I was in a Zoom with my <clears throat> other employer today. And uh, we were re reviewing preliminary presentation drawings by an architectural firm out on the the North Shore, and uh, you know they're probably I don't know they're probably getting paid fifty thousand dollars for this study, and I had to point out to them uh, your North Arrow on Whitmore is facing west. <laughs> 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 yeah. maybe come visit the site yeah yeah well i you know as as we still have our uh, uh ken here and maybe uh i had a, a question for me the fact that the university of massachusetts is going to be housing students in the econo lodge are they going to declare that a quote dormitory like situation and will that exclude them from them from the room tax and you're above my pay grade. I think that would be foolish if they tried it. Yeah, well, okay, that, that was one question. And the other question is, the far as affordable housing, uh, certainly the pandemic has caused many schools to, uh, you know, kids would take a gap year, then they would come back, and yet they would accept a larger class. And this had to do with Amherst College. Amherst College, for the first time in my memory, are allowing students to live off campus housing because they don't have enough dormitory space 
to fit all their students in. So once again, Amherst is a you know relatively small college, but it's certainly interfering with the potential quote affordable housing available to people who don't go to college. So enough said on that. Okay. I I will say. Um... Joe and um, to Jim that in, I have um, uh, recorded all of the paper copies and those comments are not, you know, those comments are shared um, with regards to um, rental housing um, for students. So that's definitely prevalent in a lot of the comments that are in the survey. Um, as yeah, I finalize it, that, I will share that. Yeah. And it's not unique to Amherst Hadley, Champaign, Illinois, uh, Baton Rouge, uh, LSU, my, my buddy was, said they have the same problems. But he said, those students clean up after their parties. So <laughs> otherwise they'll be thrown out. Okay. So, okay, so everybody's good with the, with the, with the, the, the drawings submittal. I'm gonna rename this thing <clears throat> from planning board requirements to planning board policy. It seems to be a better word to use in there um, and gives us a little bit more. It doesn't seem to be so stringent. Okay. Gives us a little leeway. So I'll, I'll make a motion to, to uh, adopt it, uh, to accept it. Ex okay. Uh, okay. Uh, to, uh, to accept uh, with edits. Uh, Remove no waiver. Yep. Renumber all paragraphs. Yes. And title policy. Uh, what, what would it be? Policy. It's just going to be called. It's going to be called planning board policy. policy. It's the middle of drawings for waiver requests and public hearings. Policy instead of requirement. Yeah, we don't we don't need to put graphics or drawing in that. No, we're just uh, it's it's an informal acceptance at this point. If something if it works out that, and then we'll add, just add a date that it was uh, when you make those changes, Jim. Just just put adopted. I just September put accepted. 6th. I just put accepted. I put today's date, so that's what we're going to accept it, and uh, I'll send it out after the meeting. Okay, so I'll, that's my motion. Okay, I could. We have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Very good. Okay. okay. All right. Anybody else have anything else? I have nothing. Yes, Mr. I, Quinlan. Just wanted to um, get your opinion and, and bring up this uh, heat on Popeyes. Um, I don't know how long they had a uh, actual pod, a residential pod there, but I caught it. It's been bugging me about the balloons and the signs, which, um, you know, they probably had a dozen other signs than you had approved and were let gone a lot further than they should have. So. First thing I guess on the balloons, I mean, that you consider that signage that they should have been taken down a lot sooner. I'm just your opinion as a board. Well, for, for, for grand opening, we've been pretty lenient on a lot of things. And but I think the grand opening is is done. Yep. I mean, they've been there now for what, three months, three months. It was I didn't even realize it was that long. So they did remove so, the majority of them. Yeah. So um, I would they, they, they need to get back to uh, their approved signage. And if they have a special or something like that, I mean, that's up to you if you want to approve some little banner for now and then for a weekend special, whatever it might be. But all those balloons and everything else, I've seen people running them over like crazy with cars. Yes. <laughs> I go by it a couple of times and it looks like they have a, a, a derby out there trying to hit them. I can so see that they that wanted... about a week ago. Go ahead, I'm sorry. No, I, I, was, I could see in their defense that they would want to keep them up until the students came back to let the students know, hey, we're here. We're new. We weren't here last year. Yeah. But, yeah, I think that's – the students are back, so. Yeah. 
Okay. And as far as the punt you, goes, I had given, you know, it's been seven days, eight days, eight days today. That they were supposed to, you know, apply, you know, send an um, email to the planning board that they were going to come to allow that pod. And, if, and obviously they haven't. So I'm going to require that for sure to be gone this week. Um, it's taken up a parking, you know, in the parking lot, which is small as it is. So I'll uh, get that out of there this week. Okay. And that was it. I just wanted to give you a heads. I, I I don't know how many times I've driven by and how long that pod was there, but I because of the balloons, I totally missed it. So until we were there with the other incident. I mean, I not, I asked once before, as far as all of these uh, pop-up signs, you know, somebody's roofing, somebody's, we, we buy houses for cars. Are you or your authority the only one that can remove it or can any town authority remove it? How is that supposed to work? I, I mean, I guess... If it isn't an, an alternate or a um, a local inspector that works with me, I, I guess that I asked you that question. Um, I had heard prior that Tim had had DPW grab him at some points. Yeah, um, Tim used to have the DPW grab. He even told me at one point, if you want to take him down and bring him to the DPW yard, that's okay. However, we adopted the new bylaw, and I think, I mean, if you wanted somebody else to do it. I would expect you would have the authority to give them that authority, but it probably should be with a simple little writing note that you have okay. the authority to remove these signs where, you know, somebody appropriate, not just anybody in town, obviously, somebody right. that knows the bylaws. Right. So, okay. Okay. No, that sounds good. I usually do it really early. And I've told you, but um, one of the businesses six months ago, prior, whatever, literally sent a, the owner who I know sent an email to the to the building department thanking me for sending me out at five thirty in the morning cleaning up the the town with it. So the people appreciate yeah. it. They do. You know, I mean, if it was if it was somebody local that had a had a, had a little sign out, it would be one thing. But these people from who knows where, you know, Dave's Truck Repair and Quint, uh, not Quinlan, uh, what's the, the Quinville? Yeah, yeah, yep. that, that has that. You know, yeah. so okay. Good. All right. Thank you. Thank you. While we're on signage, can I ask a question? Sure. Do we have any kind of, and if we don't, should we have some kind of a decency um, content? Like there was the issue of the guy who drew a penis and put it out in his yard. Um, someone else has an F-bomb on their yard. Is that freedom of speech? And where does yes. that where does that end? I'll let Mr. Dwyer answer that one. And let's just say freedom of speech, and we don't know where it ends. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, it, commercial signage is one thing. Yeah. Uh, you know, we can regulate if uh, if some company felt that that it was in their business interest to display. I don't know what, but something startling hmm. uh, on billboards or uh, or those little signs along the road, that's one thing. But when you have someone painting something on his own fence or the sign <laughs> he put on his own lawn, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much that's classic pretty First Amendment. Yeah, well, yes. Yeah, that, that, that one get into a real sticky sticky category when that happened. Mm. When I grew up in Jersey, there was a, somebody who painted their house. You know, you know how everybody used to have those like eight inch asbestos shakes. Yeah, he did. He did red, white, blue, red, white, blue. Oh my God! His neighbors were up in arms about their you know, adjacent real estate values dropping with his, uh, but years, that's, yeah, that's years not ago, There was a house in Waitley. The guy wanted to do some kind of a business out of his house. The town wouldn't let him. He was right alongside one of the entrances to 91. So he's, I'll fix them. He painted his house pink with big purple polka dots. <laughs> I'm sure the older guys around here can remember that one. Yes, uh, and it was there for years. The town could do nothing about it. 
there was a house in the center of North Hadley that was on the verge of falling down for years. <clears throat> and then suddenly uh, it uh, showed up with a coat of yellow paint, kind of like Mr. Quinlan's shirt. <laughs> uh, looked like nothing else. Uh, everyone, everyone else was was white or maybe a very few pastel greens, uh, um, bright yellow, someone who just didn't didn't give a damn, but um, <laughs> nobody could do anything about it. Right. And I guess if you're not in a historic district with a paint color review process or something. Yep. Yeah. So anyways, okay. Anybody have anything else? I have nothing. Mr. Dwyer, good? I have nothing. Thank you, Ken. Thank you, Mr. Quinlan. Thank you, Hadley Media. Thank you, Bart. Thank you, Alex. Motion to adjourn. I would second it. Okay. Well, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.